record to cloud. There, I should have heard that before. Okay, so, you know, we talked about doing this in two steps. Um, so if you're just doing an offer, you've already done this buyer representation agreement. This is not something that we need to fill in now because you've already got your buyer representation agreement. And again, you know, I was really interested in when you talked about being uncomfortable with asking questions. A lot of people were uncomfortable with asking for a buyer representation agreement. I like to say to them, you know, it's like we're dating. You know, and at first we've seen if we're going to work together, but now we're both committed to working together. So let me represent you. And, and this is the paperwork that allows me to do that. Sometimes they don't want to sign it for, say, three months, and they only want to sign it on a single property. And you can do that. You can, when you're doing a buyer representation agreement, rather than putting the area they're looking in as, you know, uh, New Market and Aurora or the GTA or however you want to word that. Um, you may just put that single address if you find that there's some resistance to it. Um, okay, so all those forms are in there. We're going to go to next. Uh, and then we're done. Okay, so let's look at this. So now we're going to go to here's the forms that are in there. We want to, on this section, upload documents. So add new documents. The documents that we're gonna drag and drop are the ones that um, we downloaded. So that's one of them. I have to go see so where. Christine, can I ask a question? If you wanted your broker of record to check your documents, where's the button to hit share on this page? That's a great question. I'm not sure that I see that. You may okay. have to email them. Oh, okay. If you see the button, up just here, there's yeah, that's the one I saw. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's the other ones, the forms. Maybe that's where I got confused. But if you see it in the in the chat, yeah, going through it. Don't forget, most of the time I'm working on this. Obviously, I don't have someone else check my work. So I'm not as familiar with um with doing that. So I'm just going to find that other drag and drop. So downloads. So I think I downloaded it there. It might be the same one that I just did. It did. But anyway, the schedule A and the schedule C should be in there. We're going to add those to the documents. So now you have all these documents and you have, or all these forms rather, and the documents. So the next, so now the next step is, let's go look at this offer and make sure we've got everything in there. So let's, well, for one, we're gonna have to do the confirmation of uh, cooperation. That has not been filled out. So we've got buyer one, we've got the seller, here's the address. That's all cool. We're going to do the listing brokerage is representing the interest of, in the, of the seller in this transaction. And it is further understood that, so it's going to be one of three things, I guess, that the listing brokerage is not representing or providing customer service. So in this case, we are providing um, we are providing the service to the buyer. The listing brokerage is providing customer service, neither one of those. We're not in multiple representation. So it's either not yourself or someone from our brokerage. So it actually will move on to this question, the cooperating brokerage number three. So we have some choices here. So the cooperating brokerage represents the interest of the buyer in this transaction. That's what we're doing. Or is, or is providing customer service or is not representing the buyer is not entered into any agreement. That's a possibility. Here's where a lot of people get confused as well. So let's just go back to that listing, see what they were offering. So here they, is they're offering 2%, 2 percent, two and a half percent. So we're gonna fill that out in our form. So you, there's a bunch of things that could vary in this, okay? So this says, as a paid from the amount to the listing brokerage is indicated in the MLS, so it would be, two and a half percent. And I want you to type in plus HST. 
and click that. So the default is that, for instance, when I showed you the listing, they did not put plus HST here. So if we had to go to a tribunal with TREB, they would not pay you the HST if this came down to a fight. So it was an error on the listing brokerage's side, but this is what you need to do to pr protect yourself. Now, you could also see a listing where it says 2.25% minus 350 marketing fee. So if you're okay with that, you can put that in there. If you're not okay with it and you want to give them a little bit of pushback, um, which is what I do, is you have to call that listing realtor and say, look, I am not comfortable with paying your marketing fees. I did not pay for marketing. That's your job. And see if you can negotiate it out, but that must be done prior to putting in an offer. If that is the case, then you fill it in here. Listing brokerage will be paid as follows. So there's no marketing fee there. And I think you'll see that pretty often in, in Markham, um, a lot of times in Brampton, they put in these marketing fees. We as a brokerage, I'm telling you straight up now, you will not be using that in any of our listings that go through our brokerage. We do not nickel and dime. We try and offer the best percentage, the cooperating brokerage, because that is the bait you're using to attract people to your seller's listing. Um, if you're going to reduce your commission, so for instance, say you're buying the property, again, it's a conversation you have to have with the listing brokerage. Some of them will say, deal with that on your own after. This is happening a lot lately. You may see instructions go out if you're in competition that say, you know, to that exact effect. If you're going to submit an offer and you want to reduce your commission, please do that directly with your buyers. So just know what, know what the ground rules are. A lot of things have changed on this landscape. Don't try and sneak this in and think that they're going to be okay with it because it actually comes off as sneaky and not cool. So there you can see as we move down, Keller Williams has been filled in. I'm going to sign this after it gives our brokerage phone number. Here it gives Superstar Realty their phone number, their address, and the name of the listing salesperson. Now, remember when we looked it up, there were two listing salespeople. So you may want to add them there. Um, that would be okay as well. And then this, this is where your buyer will sign and where the seller will sign. Now this one, uh, as you can see here, if you're in multiples, they have to actually sign this in addition to filling it out at the beginning of the confirmation of cooperation. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink. Christy, just a heads up, you're at the halfway mark like you wanted to know. Okay, we're gonna finish this form. We're gonna take a five minute bio break and then we're gonna go on. So far, is this real clear for everybody? I'm going to take that as a yes. yes. I can't see anybody. <laughs> okay. So this is that form. Um, fortunately, this, okay, I can tuck that up there. Um, we're going to take a five minute break. So it is now 201. We'll back, be back at 206. We'll pick up and we'll move on to our other forms. Um, if you have any questions that you think of while we're going through this, please feel free to bring them up, of course, and we'll go through that. Okay, take a quick break.
Hi, Christine. I have a question about the square footage. Sure. So you mentioned if these were houses below 3,000 square feet, you wouldn't necessarily put them there. Sure. But when somebody's looking for a property, um, sometimes uh, when, when I'm searching, I do put in maybe like 2,500 to 3,000 um, just because I want to find something a little bit bigger. Now, would it show up in, in that criteria if you leave it blank? No, so I wouldn't exactly. So when you're looking, don't assume that because you've put that in there, you're getting all the listings. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. In fact, you can really mess yourself up. And that your client can turn around and say to you, you know, I told you I wanted X and you've only showed me. I found there were other properties on the market and you didn't tell me about them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's also, can you please, uh, okay. So a few questions is, first of all, let's just make sure everybody's back. Okay. I can't tell. I did put a question on the chat as well. Okay. Yeah, uh, and so did Mirjan and uh, Christine. There's some people who are still, I think they're gone because their videos were on before. So maybe another minute or so. Okay. And then we'll go through because I don't want them to miss the answers. Are you guys finding this easy to follow? So far, so good. Okay. Pretty good so far. Yeah. All right. You know, some of this is just practice, guys. Like, honestly, make up fake buyers and go buy fake properties. For God's sake, don't hit submit. But you know, um, get practice because there's nothing worse than, you know, it's you need to get an offer in and you can't get your stuff together in time and your clients are anxious and you're anxious. And like I've told people multiple times, it took me five hours to do my first offer. It was a basket case. And my quickest time from offer to signing to realtor was 22 minutes. Now, <laughs> so... You know, that was 2017 when, when everything was in competition like it is now. So really become familiar with this. So the, let me know, let's see, two, 206. Okay, so we're going to move on. So I'm just going to answer this. Um, Chelsea, reducing condition, commission can be done after. Can I provide some examples? Okay, so one of the examples might be is that you have called the agent and you've said, I want to reduce my commission. And they've said, fine, but if you win the offer, we'll deal with that after. Get that in writing, get that in a text, get that somehow, you know, in writing that they're going to do that. Um, he may not want to screw, or he or she may not want to screw up the offer process because what happens is, is if you're in competition, um, you want to remember this particularly from the listing side. So say you've got the property listed, you're offering two and a half percent. Some person comes in and, and off and puts in 2%. You have to disclose that to everybody in writing that there has been a reduction of commission by a half percent. Problem with that is it now makes people think, oh, what's the point of even competing? So you're actually reducing your client's ability to attract offers, right? But if you're saying, it's not in competition. They're fine with it. They've agreed that you can reduce it after. Then you'll do an amendment and reduce it after. Um, if you're buying a property from your, for yourself, sometimes there's no commission. And, um, you know, or it gets applied. Sometimes I've seen where realtors have bought, helped their children by having the com their commission that they would be paid applied by the lawyers on closing as part of the down payment. So that's a way of managing it as well. So a little bit more complicated and probably at this point, if you're going to do something like that, I prefer you reach out and we sort of discuss it one-on-one. -on -one. Don't, don't assume anything because that does get a bit tricky. It can be argued, pardon me, it can be argued. So when you do a listing agreement, your client agrees to pay a total sum. So could, let's take, for example, 5% of which from that 5%, you as the realtor are gonna pay the cooperating brokerage two and a half percent, okay? So that is in a legally binding document that you and your client, your seller client have signed. It can be argued that someone coming in and bullying you on a reduction of commission is interfering with your contract with your client. So that's a legal argument. 
Is it fun to go through that? No, that's why a lot of times when we're, um, we know we're going to have multiples, we, we preface by sending out an email with Broker Bay that tells them exactly, and I can send you samples of this, exactly what's going to happen. Offers are going to be presented at eight. We'd like your, your offers in by seven. If you want to reduce your commission, please do that with your client. Here's the preferred closing date. Here's what's included. The survey is attached. Like you really spell it out for them so they can't mess it up. I've even seen where some realtors have put in a letter like that. Uh, please be aware that the stove, one of the burners is not functioning. You know, so there's no surprises. So that's what I want you to think about. Okay, we're going to move on now from this. I, oh, FinTrack. So the app is called FinTracker. Um, and it's paid for by the brokerage. It makes your life a whole lot easier. I think the logo is like a green symbol. It looks so you like can this. download that. You just so fin it. tracker. Okay. Oh, we got Let's, it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Let me just shut this. Okay. So now we've got one of the forms filled. So as you know, you're going to be putting in three to you're going to be putting in two forms and a few documents so form one this is an important one i'm going to go up here open form so these are the ones i've preloaded we need the form 801 do i see it there we've got 810 working with a realtor i don't see 801 so let's add that Gain spinning. Okay, so that will be on the Ontario Real Estate Association or the Toronto Real Estate Board. Let's scroll down to Toronto. And we're going to add 801, which is a summary document. Summary offer document used with agreement of purchase and sale. Okay. Form has been added. You saw that pop up. Let's go into that form so you see what to do there. Open form. Here's the forms I've added. There it is there. I'm going to click on that and we're going to fill that in. Okay. So when to use this form and what it's for. So let me tell you from the listing perspective and then I'm going to tell you from the buyer's perspective when you're working with a buyer. A few years ago, what happened, particularly in 2017, when we this was when we saw the beginning of multiple offers and craziness, just madness and insanity. Since then, we've learned how to manage it, but then wasn't so manageable. So what would happen? Standard before that time was that you would pick up the phone, you'd call the listing brokerage, and you'd say, I'm registering an offer. And they'd say, great, who are you? Christine Tonus with Keller Williams. Okay, great. So that was at the brokerage level. They accepted that you had registered an offer. Then what would happen is uh, the listing brokerage would send out an email. The systems were a little bit more difficult at the time. Send out an email saying, we have five registered offers because one of them was yours that you called in. From the listing brokerage's perspective, what if someone had made that call in and never delivered the paperwork. So now you've put out a call saying we have five registered offers, when in fact you only have four, you're up for a RICO charge on that. If someone calls in and they do and say, you know, I base my price on this, typically a seller, a buyer rather, I base my price on this. They said they had, you know, five offers. They only had four. I would have offered less. My client overpaid by 50,000. It is very messy. If you're on the listing side and people want to submit an offer, our office requires them to either provide the offer in full prior to the, the time, say, say you're accepting offers at five. So anywhere before five or six or whatever, um, they can send the entire offer to the office or the entire offer to the listing realtor. So you, or they can send a summary document. What the summary document says I have a signed offer in hand. So when you're using this form, 
make sure that when you send it to the listing brokerage, you have a signed agreement of purchase and sale. Not that they've talked to you about it. Oh yeah, I have to, you know, we'll, we'll deal with this after dinner. You need it signed. So here you're going to fill in, the buyers are going to sign it, how it was sent in, in fax, in person, whatever, to the listing brokerage at what time and what the irrevocable is. Okay, so until what time. So that's something we didn't address um, and we're going to go back to doing. So let's go back to opening forms. So you're going to fill that in. I'm not going to fill it in now. So the agreement of purchase and sale, let's go to that. Christine, I have a quick question. I know that, of course, it's always best practice to register your offer, but yes. I have heard that if you don't register it, the seller is still able to entertain um, you know, a deal that wasn't registered. Is that correct? Uh, not exactly. And not exactly. So here's the here's the catch 22. So if you don't register your offer and they accept another offer, which I think is what you're alluding to. Yes. Yes. They have no way of contacting you because they don't even know you're interested. Right. So they can't send out that email that says I have three registered offers. Now, sometimes Rico will say that if you've gone to see the property, you're an interested party and they have to inform you. Mm -hmm. Our brokerage policy is this, is when you receive an offer, you've got the listing through Broker Bay, we're going to send out, we have one registered offer, we have two, we have three. You will be interacting with either Broker Bay or the front desk to make sure that all the offers you receive are registered. So if you receive them personally, you're going to get onto the system and register that offer, or you're going to call front desk and say, I have a registered offer, and they will ask you to provide the 801 or the full offer so they can verify on your behalf that you actually have it. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Thank you. No problem. So here we're, we're back at the agreement of purchase and sale. You can see some things are missing. So we want to fill those in. So it's on the West side of Elvridge. We determine that from the map. Am I spelling this right? Here we go. In the town of Newmarket. So we've got feet in there. We've got that. We've got our elongated um, legal description. We've got our purchase price. So the price they have offered. Now we're going to fill in about the deposit. So we have some choices here with. So that's when you go, your clients rush out and they go get a bank draft. And because we're not presenting in person, what I would do is I would snap a picture of it and I would include it as a document when we send off our offer. So that's what I would do. Or upon acceptance, which gives you 24 hours to get that in or is otherwise described. So think about it this way. And Leslie and I worked on one of her clients and we put way more weight on anybody who has an offer that has a check or a picture of a check attached. Because I'll tell you the next day, those 24 hours are hell. You're waiting for that money to show up. When are they coming? We haven't heard from them. I called the realtor. He says his clients are at the bank. His clients aren't calling him back. Sometimes they don't show up with the offer, with the actual money. Now you've got a house that you have said is sold and you don't have any money. So we have to put it back on the market. So think how devastating that is to your sellers. So you got to look at it from the other perspective when you're working for a buyer, you want to give them the most powerful point. So having um, the actual money or the bank draft is way more powerful than um, upon acceptance. So do what you can, but herewith is what I would put if I had a check. Blank space here, it's payable to. Who do you think the check is payable to? The listing brokerage. The listing brokerage. Let's go back. It was rock star or superstars, right? I'm going to not spend a lot of time looking at that. This is incorrect, likely, but just you would fill that out. Um, schedules, it didn't transfer it. So we want B and C. Irrevocable. It is irrevocable by the buyer. 
until, okay, so here's where you need to have a conversation with your people. If you were in multiples, easily this can go till midnight, easily. Not my favorite thing. I'm not that smart after 9.30. So I like if they can get it done earlier. But if we're in competition, I work for my client. I'm going to do whatever I have to do to make sure that the, this goes smoothly. But, you know, if they're accepting offers at one o'clock in the afternoon, it may be done by seven o'clock, five o'clock, whatever. So determine with your client, giving them the advice I just said, what time works. So let's say... If you're going to go right to the last minute, then it's 11.59 p.m. And why I say 11.59, not midnight or not 12, there's a lot of confusion for a lot of people whether the time stamp 12 p.m. is actually noon or in the middle of the night. So don't make that mistake. Just make it super clear. The completion date, we've already discussed that. Um, email address. So again, if you want it delivered to the seller, I would go back to, let's go back to the listing. Oh, it logged me out. Okay. So whatever, whatever their, whatever the listing brokerage's email is for that specific as seen on, remember, we're going to fill in that date. So let's say January. 13th, 22. Uh, we excluded the doorbell. Hot water tank is a rental. HST. So if it is a residential property, it is included in. There are circumstances where it may not be included in. If it's a farm property, it's a vacant land. If it's commercial, it's definitely not included in. Um, multi-residential in addition to, there's a lot of circumstances where HST is in addition to. So make sure you get it right. But if you're, you know, if it's a resident and the other thing we discussed that potentially uh, with something that's been airbnb for a certain amount of time, it may be in addition to. So just know what you're selling. But if it's a straight off residential condo, uh, it's included in because there is no HST on that property. Title search, we said it was two weeks before. That's all good. Scrolling, scrolling. Buyer one, the seller. You know that the confirmation of acceptance is with the other party, unless it comes on the sign back. That might be with you then. Um, make sure you don't look like an amateur and fill this part out, the acknowledgement. Because if you read it, it says, I acknowledge receipt of my copy, signed copy of this accepted agreement of purchase and sale. And I would say probably half to one third come in that the buyer has already signed it. Like, how can they sign it? It just don't look like an amateur. You're going to sign as the cooperating brokerage. Schedule A, as you can see, my Schedule A is already filled in. So I'm gonna show you where to find all the clauses. So let's just do a delete here. So sometimes I highlight stuff for the clients so they can see it as well. Let's see, it goes on to here. So this is what I tell clients all the time. This is where the rubber hits the road. It is not allowing me to delete that. I'm just gonna back out of this for a sec guys and then come back to it. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's go see. There we go. So Schedule A is now blank. Let's see the second page. I'm going to delete that. Would you like to remove the page? I'm going to say no because it's going to overrun anyway. Okay. So in order to add clauses, you have to put your cursor in this box. So there's a whole bunch of clauses. I think there's like 600 clauses that you have to choose from. 
that can be pretty tough if you don't know your way around clauses. And I'm going to say they're not all well written. So we have actually rewritten a lot of clauses. We vetted them through lawyers. Uh, a lot of people at our brokerage um, are experts in clause writing. And it's important that if you're going to alter a clause, you vet it through someone who can read it for you and make sure that it's done correctly. But here, if you go up here, you can see clauses. Let's add some clauses. So these are personal clauses, which I've developed over time. We have office clauses, which there are a whole whack of clauses in there that we have developed for our realtors. And then there are system clauses, and we can put that in English, that these are all clauses that the Toronto Real Estate Board, RIA and CREA have developed, right? For sewer and water, sale of buyer's property, representations and warranties, etc. So, you know, you could go through these and choose your own, but I'm going to make your life a whole lot easier. I'm going to show you what we've done on your behalf. So let's go to office clauses. Let's go to consolidated common clauses. So what I've done is I've grouped clauses together for you so that you have the majority of clauses you will need. You also have to be vigilant. And if you see, you know, although it's not a rural property, it may have a wood burning stove and you may want a wet certificate. Um, you're going to need a wet certificate if you're going to get a insurance and you if you're going to get a mortgage you need insurance so just be hyper aware when you go to see properties look at the pictures just in case you've missed something but um if it's residential i refer to these four sets of clauses consolidated common clauses as a clause sandwich so if you were doing residential you would start with a1 and you do this end one. So this is a bunch of clauses at the beginning and a whole bunch at the end. If you were doing uh, a rural property, you would do one, two, and six. If you were doing a condo, you do condo and end. Just try and make it easy for you. So let's do these two. We've got that and that. Now they also need amending. So let's just look into them. There they are. So if you can see here, this gives you a time frame. So I did another piece on how to construct a good looking offer. And there are a few things that make your offer good looking and make you look as a professional. Number one is the first clause always has to be the balance paid to the purchase price. So you wanna have that in there, okay? So the buyer agrees to pay the balance of the purchase price subject to adjustments, yada, 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 by bank draft, large value transfer, et cetera. So that is always clause one. Clause, the next set of clauses is any conditional clauses. So we're just going to hit enter and then we're going to go through them. So the buyer agrees to pay the balance. We just talked about that. This offer is conditional upon the buyer arranging at the buyer's own expense, a new charge mortgage, satisfactory to the buyer, the buyer's sole and absolute discretion unless the buyer gives notice in writing delivered. That's a space. Oops. Uh, delivered to the seller by notice. And here I've got 11.59 p.m. So this is a mortgage clause and you're gonna write how many business days after acceptance. So, you know, you wanna talk to the mortgage company and see if you're gonna put in a clause like this, find out how long the mortgage broker needs to actually have this work. So I often find it's anywhere between three and 10 days 10 days is a long time for a condition. So if someone else has a two-day condition and you have a 10-day condition, exact same price, guess who they're going to go with, right? So this is a little bit of a tricky area because if you don't give your sellers enough time or your buyers enough time, then they're not going to be able to fulfill this condition. Another way you could maybe manage it, but it's a bit risky is you put a shorter time frame then as you, be, as you get closer to that time frame, you may have to do an amendment to extend it for a few days. They're not gonna necessarily extend it. So you do take a risk. So I'm gonna put in three because I actually know that they have the money and the only thing that the bank is gonna do is send an appraiser there just to confirm that the property that we're buying is actually worth that money. Um, you could also, I've had it where clients, I've talked to the mortgage broker and they said, 
They're good for a million five. We're buying a house at a million six. They know that they have a hundred grand in the bank. This shouldn't be a problem. This has got two PMs, I just noticed. You have to crack that. Um, and so we might have a very robust conversation with the buyer and say, look, there is a risk here that even though your mortgage company has said this, you might not be able to get financing. So you have to talk about that. Here's a, another clause we've added in that the buyer agrees to cooperate in providing access to the property for the purpose of the bank appraisal. I want you to leave that in, even if they decide they don't need a mortgage clause. So we can delete this, but we're saying that we still may, even though we're not putting in a condition of mortgage, we still need the appraisal company to be able to come in and on the property. If you don't have that in there, they could actually deny it. So why would a seller deny an appraiser to come in? What if 20 minutes after they accepted your property, some other rogue agent came in with a much higher offer and they have it sitting in the background? So you can put in an offer on a property that is sold, conditional, and say, it's, I can structure it for you, so how it's written. But fundamentally, it's saying, if this falls apart, I'm next in line. So you can have kind of a backup offer. So what if they have a backup offer you don't know about? And you're stringing them along because, and they won't allow you in the property because they haven't signed that in the document. You could get really caught on this. So we're just saying in here that they're going to allow them to be able to come onto the property and that a bank appraisal does not count against the visits because you're, you know, we're going to put later on that they're entitled to visits. This is the home inspection clause. Again, you're going to, um, you know, you may change the time. Sorry about this PM PM. And how many business days? Um, the seller acknowledges and consents to the third party taking photographs. So we've put that in there because they may have a valuable painting in there that the family's been fighting over. And, you know, your client is walking through the house and snaps a few pictures and somehow it gets onto the internet. They actually don't have, per pardon me, permission to do that. So we put that in there for you. Um, the seller agrees to provide at their own expense on or before the requisition date and the existing survey sharing the property locations. Well, we know that they have provided that and that's in our schedule. So we're gonna delete that. Christine, I have just a quick question on the photographs section, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I know like you had mentioned like clients taking photos, but I see all the time agents doing, you know, like agent previews and they're like going through the house and putting it on like Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Like, are they getting permission from the seller's agent I'm to? to do that yeah so they should okay they can be held accountable for that right but should they just assume they can go do that no right okay and they're yeah. gonna argue it's public domain there's pictures there's a video tour all that stuff but they were never given permission to do that so i wouldn't assume that you could okay thank you i think sometimes too christine on like the mls at the bottom it says permission to advertise yes or no right is that what it, we need to, that you can- Yeah, but you know, I still wouldn't take it that that allows you to go take your own pictures. But you should ask the agent though for oh, trying to get text. In writing, right? Yeah, Make exactly. sure you get it in writing, send oh. an email. And, and if you have a conversation with them, again, building rapport, you have a conversation and they say, yeah, go ahead, take pictures. Even though they've said it to you on the phone, send out a quick email, you know, thanks yeah. for chatting with me today. I appreciate you allowing me to take pictures blah, blah, blah. So now you have it in writing, you know? Um, does, does the same apply for social media? Because I've taken permission for that before. Do you still want it in writing or verbal is okay for that? Verbal is never okay. okay. We're, we're, in, we're in a legally binding issue with just about everything we do. So okay. yeah, verbal, always follow up with a quick email, even a text. It doesn't have to be an email, but just kind of confirm it. Okay. So, so this, uh, sorry, yeah. for social okay. media posts like that, if you don't put the address or anything, just like the city, do you still need permission from the listing agent? It's always a good idea. Okay. You can't assume it's cool. It's okay. always a good idea. Does it happen? Yes. Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. But as your broker record, I'm telling you what the rules are. Right? Got it. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Um, this one is an important one. So represent that the channels and fixtures are included in this agreement of purchase, good and safe working order and free from all leaves and encumbrances. Um, this shall survive, et cetera. So make sure that, and here, this is what we've added. So again, this is not a standard clause. We've added this. In the event that the channel fixture is a lease or rent to own, the seller agrees to discharge the contracts, liens or encumbrances, and provide clear title on or before closing. So we have found that, for instance, so they decide they want a new air conditioner and the, the salesman convinces them that if you're doing that, you might as well get a new furnace and we'll just put it on rental payments. Ends up that there's a lien against the property for those. So they're on a rent to own or a lease. And Buying it out at the end of the lease could cost $16,000 or more, depends on the company. If you don't put this in, you might be paying for it, by the way, not the seller or the other agent. So this is one of the clauses that we have amended for our realtors. And the seller represents that the time that they've owned the property the use of the property building and structures thereon is not or ever been for the growth and manufacture of illegal substances. This is during the time they've owned it. Um, I'm ambiguous about this clause. I think some of it doesn't need to be there, but you know, mortgage companies may want to see that. So it's not a bad one to have. They agreed to leave all the keys, instruction manuals, et cetera, on the countertop or as, as instructed with the lawyer. This is the views. They have the right to view the property two more times, giving them 24 hours notice. They may bring members of their family and something got deleted. I'll have to check on this, but those that's kind of basic, basic clauses that are in there. Christine, what does it mean when it says like shall mer um, survive and not merge? Um, yeah, right. So that's a great, great question. So in closings the day of closing that's that's a, that merges so anything you've, you've written before then so say you have a pool clause right and you say that it will be in good working order on the day of closing if it works or you think it works but you haven't checked it that obligation is done mm -hmm. so Say you buy a house right now and it's got a pool. You need to put in a pool clause that has perhaps a $500 holdback or it will, it will not merge so that you have until say April 15th to check the pool. In the event there's a problem, that $500 holdback will be applied. We've got all those clauses in our office clauses. I believe there's two pool clauses in there, but that's what it means. On the day of closing, when that document has changed hands and the ownership has changed hands, whatever they have written in here, that things are good on closing, you know, if you haven't checked them or it, the, you don't have the ability to check them, then you could be out of luck. So one of the other things to make this look pretty is sometimes we number these and sometimes I, as well, Numbering them is kind of nice. So I always go back and put one, two, three at the beginning of each clause. But sometimes also identifying the clause is also good. So, uh, you know, I might, I might title this um, bank appraisals. Sorry, Christine, what was that line? I think Stevie just asked, will not merge? Is that will what? Merge. Yeah, so you'll see it. Uh, let me find you one. Title. This warranty here, this warranty shall survive and not merge on the completion of the transaction. Okay. So they have said, they represent and warrant that to the best of their knowledge, belief the building or structures were not used for legal substances. So it means on the day of closing, if you find a document or a newspaper article that says it was used for, you know, it was a grow house mm -hmm. um, and you don't have this will not merge, too bad because it's done on the day of closing. But this is saying, yeah, if this extends past that uh, and we find out stuff, we can come back after you. I see, thank you. So once, yeah. once the word means merge and there's no shall survive, it means it's done. It's, it's, it's done. Merge, yeah. right? Okay. Here's another way that this is whitewashed a little bit. It says to the best of their knowledge and belief. So, you know, if you own the property during the time the seller has owned the property, I don't know if I would keep 
that in to the best of their knowledge and belief. If you say, if you go back in time, right? So if they don't know during the time that they've used it, if it has been used as a grow up, that should not be in there. But if they have, say for instance, the parents died, the kids are taking it over. Do they know if their parents grew weed? Maybe, maybe not. You know, so they might put to the best of the knowledge and belief or they might strike that out completely. I just have to read something, guys. Okay, no problem. Okay, so that is kind of the world of clauses. As I said, there are hundreds of clauses. So there's pool clauses, there's rent to own clauses. There are a whole bunch of clauses that you can access. If you, what I'm gonna request is if you wanna add a clause, you go ahead and do that to the best of your, you know, the best of what you believe and then have someone proof it. But don't give us a call as a brokerage or a broker record or your coaches and say, what clauses do I put in? You've got to learn this stuff. You are ultimately responsible for how this offer gets constructed. So I want you to be fully aware of that. So, all right, so let's go look at, now we've got, it's open forms. So we've taken care of the agreement of purchase. We've taken care of the buyer. We're not doing that right now. The confirmation of cooperation and the form 801. So those are all cool. We're ready to put in that offer. So what you would do, I would go here and send to AuthentiSign. Sorry, Christine, is there a place, perhaps I missed this, like a quick reference on all of the forms that need to be included with the yeah, offer? Yeah, that's a great question. So there are a few places. Um, one is, uh, can I leave this site? Let me see if I've got this open somewhere else. If you want to finish this like section and no, then answer my question fine. at this the end. A, this is a great time. Okay, so have you guys signed into command at all? I have, yes. Okay, so when you're in command, and you've created an opportunity. So I'm gonna go through this super quick because we only have 15 more minutes and we haven't even touched on if you're doing a listing, but the same things apply. You gotta know which forms to use and how to fill them in. This is transferable, but say you're going to, let's create an opportunity. So it's a team, there's no team. The type, we're gonna work with a buyer. I am the owner of this, the client. I'm just gonna put buyer um, commission rate is 2.5. Stage we're at nurturing. So now I'm creating a buyer, right? So here's my buyer. Here's you know where I'm gonna put in all the details. So if I go to documents. And we're gonna select a status, so we're not. We're gonna accept the type. So it's a buyer for residential. All right, this is cool. So if you look in here, this is the forms you will need, right? So at the consultation stage, you're gonna need working with a realtor, either a buyer representation agreement or a buyer customer service. You're gonna need the FinTrack and you know, there's some other extra forms, but I've marked, I've uploaded all of these in the order you need them. Um, so if you just do this, you'll see what's required and what's conditional and what is optional. Now it isn't optional that you do fin track. What's optional is here's one fin track. So if they're a spouse, then the second one is not optional, but I didn't want to put the two are required in there, right? So just so you know, if they're, then if you're under contract, Here's all the forms you need. Copy the deposit, receipt of funds, all those things you need eventually. Mutual release, God forbid. Listing brokerage's business card, if there's a referral agreement, if there's a waiver, notice of fulfillment, amendment to the agreement of purchase and sale. So here are the required ones. Confirmation of cooperation, agreement of purchase and sale. Copy of the deposit receipt, that happens after it goes through. So I've listed these all in here for you. So that's one place to look. 
or I sent out that email through Wayne that has a list of all those forms. Um, let me see, where did we have that? So there's the forms. So I'm gonna update them. So that's for buyer forms and seller forms. Okay, does that answer your thank question? You. Yep, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, let's go back to... Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Hmm. I feel like I've lost my place in here. There's another forms tab to the right. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, agreement purchase to sale. And we're going to go to send it to AuthentiSign. Do the new authentic sign. I gotta say, I don't know my way around it as much because I have not used it as much yet. Let's see if it moves us on. Have you guys worked with authentic sign yet? Yep. Yep, just not the new one. It's not the new one. Yep. Okay. Yep. For some reason, it's not letting me in. Let's see if I hit cancel. It'll allow me in here. Spinny wheel of death. I don't know why I can't get there, but um, I'm going to tell you to play with this and do that. So now you know you know your way around web forms. You know where to find forms that we have as the brokerage, you can add your own personal ones in there. Um, just wanted to go back to this for a second. Yeah, I needed to get into that. So when I send it to AuthentiSign, I want to include all those documents. And I don't know why it's, I'm going to go to classic, maybe that'll work. It's allowing me there. I'm not seeing it. Let's look here. Yeah, it is not allowing me, guys. I'm really sorry. It's not functioning. I'm not sure whether it's I have too many things open. Let's kill that one. Go home. That helps. Christine, did it go like this? There's Geo Warehouse open, and then there's Authentisign open to the right of that, up at the very top of your all of your tabs. Did it go there? I don't know to Authentisign. Let's see. We've got forms, Geo Warehouse. Is that Authentisign? She means yeah. She means that tab. That tab beside Geo Warehouse oh, is it's, I signed someone else's Authentisign. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for for looking. So I don't know why Geo Warehouse has expired. Forms. So you may have to be playing with this on your own guys, because this is not helping. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. So do you guys have any other questions that I could help you with while I am here? Leslie, you have done this multiple, multiple times. Was that helpful at all? It was so helpful. Christine, every time I take this, I learn something new. I love your course. Absolutely oh, amazing. Um, the question I had is, in at one point, you, you wrote about where they, what's that called? The, um, the assessment roll number? Yes. Where, where will that pop up? on the off agreement of purchase and sale. Will that go beside the address? Yeah, it's not showing up in there, but it's also part of when you do a listing. So yeah, it's kind listing. of good practice yeah. to have the that in there. On the listing MLS, it will show up. Yeah. And it's good but, to have there. 
I, I knew about that, but should it be also on the agreement of purchase and sale? Like, should we write in where the address is and then the ARN or no? You could do that if you have concerns, maybe in a schedule. Okay, in a schedule, okay. Yeah, and at the end of schedule A, you could write that in. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna try something. Let's just see if. Let me go back to Chrome. Okay, I have. You can all see me still, right? Yep, we can see you. Okay. See if that will work. I'm just going to close a few things. I'm going to I'm going to open up Authenticide. Christine, after would you be able to send us um, the broker bay? Like if we're a multiple offer, or we have the listing and potentially we have multiple offers. What that email is that you send out to the agents? Yeah. Um, send out email. Thank you. Have I ever sent that to you, Les? You have, but I'm. I'll look to see if I can find it. I don't know if it had been updated. I'll yeah. look for it. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm just going to see if I can pull it up. I think it may be in Broker Bay as well. I'm just trying to think of where I have it. Probably in an email. Okay, I'll send it up. I'm going to take a sec, guys. Just give me a sec. I'm going to see if I can find it in my email so I can send it to you right now in the chat. I'm gonna tell everybody, Christine is a godsend to our company. I love Christine. We've been good friends for a long time and she's absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, with questions. Yeah, I think all... she's great, great. It was really easy to learn this stuff today. Oh, good. I, I, to me, I never know how it translates, right? Because it's, um, it's pretty complicated stuff and it's really involved, but. No, okay. but you got it like, you got it very good. Okay, great. I can agree with all that too. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to send it out with uh, to Wayne and he'll send it out to you just in case. Um, I just quickly, we've got like nine minutes. I'm going to just kind of show you the same thing about, um, let's see if we can do a listing. So we go to the home button here. We're going to add, add a transaction say oh, Christy we can't see your screen oh okay yeah there you go can you see me now or no nope. no I'll let you know when okay so hang on share screen okay share yeah you're good okay I'm just gonna move this up all right, so you're going to go back to this. Let's going to we're going to do like the Reader's Digest of how to create a listing. So we're going to go to this transaction here. We're going to create and create a transaction. So I want you to do this. Learn this up front. Look at Authentisign and Web Forms as filing cabinets where you put all your documents. So that when you look a specific address, you will be able to see all the forms that have gone back and forth. So you may have amendments. You don't save them in all sorts of wonky places. Pardon me, put them in one single place. So let's create a transaction. This is gonna be a listing. So one, two, three, Main Street. We're gonna use the template uh, freehold listing. Import data. That's a little bit trickier. I'm not gonna play with that now with you. We are the listing sale person, create. So again, remember this on the details that we went through, 
So you're going to put the street, one, two, three, name, street name, main street, city, new market, Ontario, L3, Y, oops. Vintage direction east. I'm making this up, right? Um, you won't have an MLS number because you haven't listed it yet. The property top is residential. The MLS number, you won't have property width. Again, making stuff up. Assessment roll number, we discussed that. Lot size code is feet. You're going to Go to Geo Warehouse and get that. Legal description, Geo Warehouse. Comments, we'll talk about that in a minute. Listing price, you will have discussed this with your clients. Present use, residential. Property includes, so, you know, stainless steel, fridge, stove, et cetera, okay? You guys get the drill again. I'm doing this in five minutes or less. Excludes hot water, uh, excludes, let's say, um, chandelier. Purchase price you don't know. You see how this is the exact same form, but this is now for listings, rental items, hot water tank. Additional schedules, we have our schedule B plus the survey. So I'm going to put C and in brackets survey. Uh, legal description, you're going to cut and paste. So the contract date, you're going to see your client tonight. The expiry date is three months from now. You're not putting in your revocable date, all those things. Those are as if you were going to do an offer, but the fundamentals are the same in both. So here's me. Here's the brokerage. We're going to add the client. So the type, they are seller. This, do not forget the type, because when these forms self-fill in, they will put the signature where the seller is supposed to sign us. So this is seller one and their email is seller one at gmail.com. Add to the address book, save. So now we've added another person. Next, here's the forms, right? So uh, residential information checklist, good thing to bring with you. So you go through, as you're going through the house, it kind of triggers you to ask questions. Uh, listing agreement, working with a realtor and data, data information three sheet. These are your three critical ones for listing. Also the Keller Williams lockbox open house and advertising form is a really good one to have because it also informs them and has them sign that if they're, say we're back to doing open houses and the COVID is gone forever, um, and their jewelry gets stolen. If you've had them sign that document, it says right in that document, make sure you tell your insurance agent that you're having open houses and take your valuables out of this. This Keller Williams service guarantee is a nice one too. It says that, you know, if you're not doing what you said you were going to do and they've talked to you about it, then you'll cancel the contract. What this does is it makes sure you have communication with your seller. And so if you said you're going to do something, they can now hold you accountable. And me as your broker of record, if they call me and say, I want to cancel the contract, she never did what she was supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. Well, did you have a conversation with her? Then I'm going to talk to you. I am very unlikely to cancel anybody's contract. Very, very unlikely. And unless you as a realtor are a sham, in which case you won't be working for us. So, but this is kind of, it gives them, gives them faith in what you're doing. But really what you're saying in that, in that document is talk to me. I'm not doing something the way I should be, the way it makes you happy. Let's talk about it. Let, give me a chance to correct it. You will be adding in our Schedule B. And again, FinTrack is here, but you are going to do that with the app. So next. Done. 
So now we're going to go to, let's go to two, two, two. How am I doing? Two minutes. I'm not going to do it in two minutes. You guys okay if I go a bit over? You're not fine with me. Yeah, yeah. Christine, there's something in the chat from Danielle. I know the session wasn't recorded right from the beginning, but can you share with us what was recorded from today so I can reference back, please? Yeah, I will do. Uh, of course, reach out to Wayne. He'll have um, all the information on that. Like he'll be able to share the because I don't have access to this once we're done. So let's look at the listing agreement quickly. It's either going to be MLS or exclusive. Let me give you what I believe I've developed with the brokerage that I think is critical. And this is because I was burnt and I don't want it to happen to you. So if you're talking to a seller and they say, oh, I need two months to get the house ready. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do all the paperwork after that. I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna encourage them to do an exclusive listing right now. Because the moment that bin goes outside their driveway, there's going to be realtors knocking on their door, neighbors knocking on their door. I lost a listing because I didn't get this paperwork signed right away. Their neighbor knocked on the door and they sold it to them. So even if they're not ready to put it on MLS, get it exclusive. And then what you can do is, so say the exclusive, say you've got the two months, plus you want to have it on the market for three months, do an exclusive for five months. And at the point where they're going to change it, from exclusive to MLS, you're going to do an amendment to the listing agreement which changes it from exclusive to MLS. But meanwhile, you have them under contract during that time. So that's where I'd like you, you know, if you're not, if they're not ready to put on MLS right away, that's what I want you to do. Get exclusive, do an amendment later to move it to MLS. So we've got is, our there a, is there a maximum amount of time it can be an exclusive before it goes to an MLS listing? Nope. Okay. No, but if, if it's over six months, you need them to initial. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so some things that I do that you may do or not do, it's up to you. I always put the commission at 6%. Then in conversation, I lower it to five. So I think they're getting a deal. But I don't think I've ever taken a listing at six. But it makes you look generous. Sometimes you'll have to do it for less than that. Um, as your skills increase and Wayne is the perfect one to help you through those commission objections, but I always start at six and mark it down. Um, that's something that was taught to us by uh, Marvin Alexander and he has that down pat. Two and a half percent goes to the other brokerage. So it comes out of that. So I don't ever want to see this under two and a half percent because otherwise, how are you paying them? The clients pay you that, we pay out that. I always do holdover periods for 120 days. I know some people sorry do it. Hi, Kristen. Sorry to interrupt. So two and a half percent plus HST, or we don't need to put HST. Here. Yeah, plus HST. Plus HST. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, no problem. So that's again, I'm like ripping through this. Um, let's go through. you want to make sure does not is filled in here. That's when you go to get them to sign. You're signing on behalf of the brokerage. The seller is signing. You sign here that you have insurance and then they get the paperwork on this document. Let's go to the next piece because this is the one. Open form, the MLS data sheet freehold. This is where Leslie and I talked about putting in the ARN and the PIN number. Or here we go. Okay, so you're gonna put in the roll number, the area. So I don't know what the roll number is. We'd have to go back to that, but let's just do this part. York, the PIN number, you're gonna do new market. Community, wherever the community is, Central New Market. Um, abbreviation Main Street. Legal description, cut and paste from Geo Warehouse on whatever side of the street it was. The lot frontage. 
75.55, again, making these numbers up. It's in feet. So the ones that are in pink, you have to fill out. The ones that are not in pink, you don't have to fill out at the moment. Direction. You lock. Price, the taxes, you want a copy of the tax receipt. Don't, don't let them guess at it. Contract date, the expiry, the possession date, it can be to be determined. Holdover is 120 days. So then you're going to go through, check all these off. You know, is it garage built in? Are they on septic or sewer? Again, anything in pink has to be filled out. Pool above ground, indoor, none. Fireplace. Yes, no, all those things, right? You're going to go through it. Uh, remember that plus ones are anything that is in the bedroom, is in the basement. So if you have one kitchen upstairs and one in the basement, it's going to read one plus one. Okay. Then you're going to go through, you'll do the level. So this is on the main floor. The room is the kitchen. Oops, kitchen, the length, the width, and the descriptions. So it could be, you know, here's a whole bunch to choose from, right? So you could have a hot tub in the kitchen. That's a big cellar, etc. So go through those. The description, you know, that's your flowery language about, um, you know, it's one of a kind in a great neighborhood, you know, big open backyard. Make sure nothing you put in there is incorrect or misleading. Uh, one of our realtors was brought to court. It never went through, but he was brought to court because he said a very desirable neighborhood. And they said, how can you prove it was desirable? It was in Stonehaven. It's one of the nicest neighborhoods in um in Newmarket, but they actually brought them to court on that as part of a big thing, but it was one of the things that they called them out on. And I gotta say, it's one of the most disturbing things that I had been to is how these people treated him. So you're gonna fill, fill all this out, right? So distribute, I always put yes, yes, yes. You can read about these and decide if you want that for your clients. I put this no, because they just call me for ridiculous reasons. Contact after, no. Occupancy, if it's the owner or an owner and tenant, upload our own photos. Okay, I want you to notice this. This is the only document, the only document where only the seller signs, besides working with a realtor. But this is the only document. So again, when we went to court on a different thing um the judge said was this completed before they signed it and the answer fortunately was yes so when you think of it it's the seller's covenant that the information that you are putting in this and putting on their listing is correct if you scroll down you'll see all the descriptions of you know room style circular all the options you have in those drop downs what the levels are what the codes are so you know what's available okay when you go to, when you're ready to list this, you can hit here, upload listing. And it because I didn't sign into TREB, it may not work at this moment, but it puts it in the draft section. Here it is, upload successful. So it's in the draft section of my um, TREB access. So I can go back in and I can edit it. I can upload the pictures and when I'm ready, to hit submit, all this information is already there. So that was the uh, nine minute how to do listings. It's way more in depth than that, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of it, okay? I think that's it for today, guys. Any Thank other you, questions? Christine. So Christine, if we do wanna get more info on stuff, like, uh, like if we wanted more in depth with this uh, transaction here thing, uh, where can we find out? how to do it yeah so some of it i'm going to really highly recommend of it some of it is just go and play with this okay right like 
I found out more by playing with it. I've never actually taken a course on this. Oh, okay. So I just, I just kept playing with it, moving stuff around. How do I get this to sign? Um, you know, I had, sometimes I'll Google an answer and, and see if there's a YouTube on it. There's a ton, ton, ton of YouTube. Um, tons of YouTube on Korea. Leslie, Leslie, you got to mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my no, little okay. granddaughter. No problem. It's a good objection. Mm -hmm. um, stop sharing. Yeah, so definitely, I believe if you sign on to web forms, there's a question mark there, and that gives you the ability to like a whole bunch of videos you can go look oh, at. So, thank you. Yeah, do that. Just poke around and see what's there. And, you know, you may come up with a tip that you want to share with us. Um, <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much, Christine. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Glad to see all you guys on there. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Take care, guys. That was Bye. wonderful. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Thank you.